a-hole for telling my sister-in-law slash best friend that she overshadowed my wedding. Burner account. I, 29 female, am married to Nate, 29 male, and his sister, Denise, 29 female. We were all childhood friends and I married Nate almost a year ago. Denise at the time was seven months pregnant with her first child. Her husband is Wayne, 30 male. Not too long after our reception started, Denise went into preterm labor. Girl, tell me that you don't think that your sister-in-law overshadowed your wedding because she went into labor. Her pregnancy up until that point was not high risk, so this was completely out of nowhere and stunned all of us. Probably her too. Can't really choose when you go into labor. Impossible. She understandably had to leave with Wayne to the hospital and most of their side of the family left out of concern. She insisted we stay and have fun and Lord knows Nate and I tried, but knowing she was in unexpected high risk labor was at the forefront of our minds. And we made the difficult decision to end the reception about an hour and a half early and joined up at the hospital. I'm sorry that that happened at your wedding. Unfortunately, it kind of just seems like circumstances sucked, but I'll let you continue. My nephew, Ben, was born that night and we were all excited, but I'll admit that Nate and I felt a bit miffed that our wedding was kind of stolen by this event. You can't really steal someone else's wedding when you're going into labor. I don't really think that she planned on that. We kept this to ourselves though. That's probably a good thing as this was obviously unplanned and it's cruel to put that on Denise and Wayne. But from that point on, nobody ever talked about our marriage, just baby Ben. I'm sorry, what do you expect them to like say? They want you to talk about your, your wedding or how nice it was or what do you expect the conversation to be about? A little confused about that. The times I think a relative mentioned our wedding can be counted on one hand. It seems a little bit weird that you're expecting people to like just talk about your wedding. It's a little odd. What are you gonna say? Oh my God, I loved your wedding, love that speech. Conversation over. I get it, new additions to the family are ultimately more important, but my wedding day will never just be about my wedding. It'll be about Ben. And whenever he comes up or I see him, I feel bitter because I'm reminded of what happened at the wedding. Girl, you should be so freaking pleased that this happened at your wedding. You should be happy for your sister-in-law and your best friend. Like what the actual f Yes, I know I'm jealous of a baby. I feel like shit for it. Well, I'm glad you can acknowledge that. Nate was like this too for a while, but grew out of it. I'm still working on it. Oh dear. I don't know, man. I think that this is a problem that you're inventing in your head. I think that like, of course your loved ones are happy for you and your wedding, but there's a baby now. So when you get married, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden, like everyone else's lives stop and nothing will ever happen to anybody else because you got married. Ben is turning one in two weeks and that's all everyone is talking about. Not a peep about our anniversary. I mean, I don't really talk about other couples anniversaries though. You just like kind of share it on social media. You do something nice for your husband and he does something nice for you. Maybe you go like go away somewhere, do something romantic and whatever. It's not really about everybody else. <laughs> like it really isn't. It's about you and your relationship. We don't throw anniversary parties for other people. <laughs> okay, maybe like a 50th wedding anniversary. We'll throw a big party, you know what I mean? But like, congratulations, you made it to one year. No? I already know I'll just be depressed and mopey the whole time. So I asked if Nate could politely tell him I would not be there. He and Denise were pretty upset and demanded to know why. He refused, so she confronted me via text. She told me she's picked up on how I seem sad whenever Ben is mentioned and said I'm hurting her and I can't tell her why. I decided to be honest and tell her that I've been very depressed, not just for this issue, but is contributing. And that I felt that my wedding was overshadowed by her unexpected labor. Oh dear. Girl, this is not a problem. Like this is literally something that you're inventing in your head. And like, honestly, you should be happy for your friends when they get pregnant and have children. It doesn't mean your wedding was any less important. Validation from other people should not be what you're worried about. I did tell her I'm not mad at anyone because it was unplanned. I just need to not be reminded of it on my anniversary. So what is she supposed to do? Move her son's birthday so that you can have your anniversary? <laughs> what the f Girl, you're being Delulu. She did not respond and just blocked me. But Wayne uninvited Nate and told him to keep him and I far away from his family. Nate's confused and I feel like shit, am I the a-hole? You're kind of a dick, yeah. Like you're kind of being really unreasonable. I don't really see why her having a child is such a big problem for you. And you certainly can't expect to have a friendship with a person that you feel this way about. I'm not gonna lie, you are kind of being an a-hole. It's okay to have these feelings. People get jealous. 
this. People get like weird about other people overshadowing their successes. It's normal, it's human emotions and they're very complicated and they usually have more to do with us than them. But it doesn't mean that it's okay. It's not okay to tell your best friend that they overshadowed your wedding because she went into unexpected labor. Like that's kind of mean. She couldn't help the fact that she was in labor. She couldn't help the fact that she was pregnant. Let's see what everybody else had to say. Ben is turning one in two weeks and that's all everyone is talking about. Not a peep about our anniversary. Well, yeah, that's just how things go. Your anniversary is an important day to you. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. But with all due respect, it doesn't even mean much to anyone else. You and your husband are the ones who are supposed to be giving each other attention on your anniversary. Literally. So freaking weird, man. You know that Denise didn't do anything to intentionally steal attention away from you. Neither did that baby grow up a bit. You're the a-hole. Yeah, you kind of sound like you're upset. You know, like when little kids get upset that someone else got a present on their birthday and you didn't get anything on their birthday. That's what you sound like right now. <laughs> Maybe it's different with other families, but I've never known anyone other than the married couple themselves to really celebrate their anniversaries. Occasionally their kids at most. I think OP needs therapy. This is not normal or healthy. I agree. To have the expectation that other people are gonna celebrate your anniversary is super weird. Don't, don't go there. You're the a-hole dude, really? No one's talking about your anniversary? Why would they? Over a child's birthday? I was born on Christmas Eve. So yeah, life ain't all about you. <laughs> Literally, what are you supposed to do? Who cares? Just like shower love on your husband. Um, phrasing? And he can shower love on you and you can validate each other. Phrasing. But don't expect validation from other people because it's your anniversary. You gotta figure out what the hell is really going on here. Why is it that you can't be happy for somebody else? Ask yourself that question. Cause that's what's really going on. The amount of people who seem shocked that nobody else cares about their wedding. <laughs> Beyond having fun on the day is astounding, literally. Like it's a fun party and we'll talk about it. And like if something funny happens or whatever, that's all it is, bestie, that's all it is. Even for their 10th wedding anniversary, they throw a party if they want a party. Literally nobody else cares and it would be weird if they did, honestly. People have a huge misconception of how amazing their weddings were. For most guests, it's essentially just a social obligation. I've never discussed a wedding for days or weeks after. Honestly, come to think of it, neither have I. Like I've said, oh my God, I had so much fun at your wedding, blah, blah, blah. It was so fun, blah, blah, blah. That's it. You don't get a medal. You are being an a-hole, my dear. I say, so does Reddit. Quiet! I'll hold you in contempt! I was disinvited to the baby shower I was originally planning. Okay, advice please. Here's some background. I, 33 female, have been dating a widow, 51 male, for the past 10 months. I know there's a significant age gap. I never thought I would be with someone older, but after a failed marriage, I met him and it's always seemed truly meant to be. We're very serious about each other, very much in love, and live together along with his youngest son, 21. His wife died almost two years ago before we started dating. I've always gotten along really well with his eldest daughter, who has a different mom than his late wife. Let's call her Ella, as she's very kind and always supports her dad. We've gone on vacations all together and we used to see them almost every week for dinner. Ella and her husband are having a baby. Her mom is not the most reliable person, so I offered to throw the baby shower with the help of my boyfriend. We were talking about some details at dinner once, and she was stressing out about it. That evening, I texted her a message letting her know that everything would be taken care of and to not worry about it. All I needed from her was a specific was whether she wanted a specific theme or wanted it to be a surprise, as well as the guest list, and I never heard back. Two weeks later, she texts her dad that a family friend is actually going to be throwing it for her and she doesn't want me to come because she doesn't want any tension at the party between my mom and her. Her mom and my boyfriend haven't been together for 28 years. He had a 20-year marriage after that too, as well as in-laws from the late wife's side, specifically my boyfriend's mother-in-law, which is strange because after the mother-in-law started some major family drama, that crossed a lot of lines. Ella said she never wanted to see her again. That and the fact that she's generally a mean lady. My boyfriend got upset with her because he does a lot for her and everybody in general as he is a very kind man and is tired of people not having his back. Note, him dating me was hard for some family and friends to deal with as they've not been the most supportive. Daughter also needed help watching the baby, so I told her that I would take care of him one day a week during the summer as I have most of it off since I'm a teacher. So I was really hurt and feel taken advantage of that I went from planning this special day for her to not even being invited and being one of the few people she's planning on trusting with her son. Ella and my boyfriend haven't spoken since. It's been a few weeks. He had texted her after their heated phone conversation and she never responded. 
I still think he should go there to, to be there for his daughter. He's uncertain. Any advice on how to navigate this whole thing moving forward? And then there's a couple edits. Based on some responses, I must not have been clear about the baby shower planning. Months ago, we were talking about the baby and I asked her who was going to throw her the baby shower. She said she didn't have anyone offer and seemed bummed, so I offered for her dad to throw it. She accepted. We didn't do much planning except starting to get the house ready, finishing up on some projects and some preliminary research. It then came up at dinner a couple of months after the offer that she was stressing about it, hence why I texted her that evening, letting her know everything was going to get handled and not to worry much about it except letting us know what the theme was that she wanted and the guest list. That's the text that she never responded to. Similar situation happened with the childcare where I offered to help her too. Continuing on the edit, Ella is 28. Ella's mom and my boyfriend were only together for a few months, 29 years ago. I never expected the mom not to go to the shower. The person throwing the shower is my boyfriend's best friend's wife, who has always had a problem with me. We don't know why, maybe my age, but she has never excluded me from events that she has thrown before in the past, so I don't think it's her. Based on some of the comments, I'm genuinely confused by people's inability to recognize the people that people can offer help without any ill intentions or ulterior motives. I truly only wanted to help her out and would have been 100% respectful and supportive if she declined, which I believe. I think I do believe. I think too. that's true. I just don't think you guys work out. And I think it's mainly on her part. It's not even on your part. She just doesn't want the relationship. I do thank all of you for commenting, giving advice, and helping me see a lot of different sides of the situation, as well as hearing your stories of similar struggles. There are so many comments that I've been trying to keep up with and respond to everybody, but it's becoming much bigger than I anticipated. So I thank you all for your super, for your help and insight. I will update you guys again if anything happens. I think my boyfriend is a narcissist. What should I do? Disclaimer is not my story to tell me on Instagram. Brace yourselves because this is one messed up story. Five months ago, my bestie and I show up to this party. Think really rich people living in the Hamptons. A la Great Gatsby, but with TikTok and cell phones. My bestie and I look fabulous. Out of nowhere, this guy comes up to me and starts talking to me like he knew me. I was actually confused. I thought maybe we had met before and I was embarrassed that I didn't recognize him. So I entertained him for about 10 minutes. That's when he told me that he lied. That he'd never met me before, but he was pretending so that he could actually talk to me. I was actually charmed. You see, he's English and he was in town for about a week visiting his friends. The very rich people who were hosting the party. He charmed me so much that night. By the end of the party, he started love bombing me. No, I didn't know he was doing it at the time. He was giving me every single compliment he could think of. How pretty I was, how beautiful my hair was, how I was the prettiest girl in the entire party. They were very generic compliments. But he still managed to charm me. That's when he said, can I kiss you? I said no. And then he kissed me. I was stunned, but I kind of liked it. For the rest of that week, he started showing up everywhere I was. After about two weeks, he convinced me to be his girlfriend. But then he started making me feel bad for the people I was hanging out with. You see, I have a lot of guy friends. And he would say things like, if you love me, you wouldn't be hanging out with all these guys. And the love bombing continued every single day, every hour of the day. He worshipped me. Before I knew it, I was prioritizing him and only him. I stopped hanging out with friends. And he started criticizing my appearance and changing the way that I was dressing. Then one day, he told me that I was stupid for not realizing that he was lying to me all the time. When I asked him what he meant, he said, wow, then you really are stupid. Two days later, I found out he's not even English. He's from Ohio. Everything he said is a lie. Then he love bombs me and follows it up with criticism. And when it comes to intimacy, he makes me feel like I'm not good enough, but then he always wants it. And last night he told me that he's more attractive than I am. And if that bothers me, can someone tell me what a narcissist actually is? I think I'm right about this. What should I do? I spent $700 on a flight to go see a man only to reject me after seeing me with no filter. Disclaimer, this is not my story time is that I'm in on Instagram. You're gonna hate me even more by the time this ends. I'm gonna call this man Pee Wee. He lied about being 6'2". Because when I met him, he was more like 5'7". So Pee Wee and I met on a dating app because everybody meets on an app today. We messaged each other for about four hours. After that, he was completely obsessed. I gave him my Instagram and after that, he started liking all of my pictures and videos. Now, I really don't post a lot, but what I do have on my page is very cute. And yes, I do use a filter every now and then. But in my defense, I did not use a filter in every single picture. In fact, a lot of my pictures are without makeup. But apparently, he didn't see any of those. After three days of DMing each other, he asked me if I wanted to come visit him. He lives very far away, which means I needed to be the one to fly over there. And why was I okay with this? Because I was delusional. When he suggested it, I thought he was going to pay for the ticket. But he said, let me know when you've booked your flight. So I thought, okay, maybe he'll pay for half of it later. But no. I booked my flight like the idiot I am, get myself on a plane, and the whole time, we're still talking. After eight hours of traveling to go see this man, I'm exhausted and hungry. He comes to pick me up, but when I see him, I knew right away he lied. He was not 6'2". He was like 5'7". After we hugged and said hi, Pee-wee started staring at my face. And let's just say he was not impressed. 
We got into Pee Wee's car and that's when he said, you look really different in real life. And he started asking me how old I really was. I had to show him my license to prove that I wasn't telling a lie. And that's when he said that he wasn't really feeling me and that I could go back home if I wanted to. Excuse me? After eight hours of traveling, he didn't even offer to take me to dinner. He didn't even ask me how I was. He just said, you can go. I asked him to pay for the ticket and he said he couldn't. And on his Instagram, he presents himself as being rich. I called him out on not being 6'2 and he said that he didn't lie about that. Well, I got a hotel and stayed the weekend and then I went home. I feel like an idiot. I would love to punish him, but I don't know how. Any ideas?